thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today at this fantastic event, the Netrio User Group Get Together. My name is Tara Franzanello. I am the Program Development Manager here at IMIX Group, Netrio's partner in the public sector, supporting Netrio and its channel partners to make selling into the government easy, whether it's federal, state, and local education, we are here to support you. Um, quick introduction to today's uh, presenters. Let me introduce you to the team. I'll ask my colleagues to introduce themselves, starting with Ryan Nelson. Ryan. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Nelson. I manage the market intelligence and analytics at IMIX Group, which is really just focused on helping you identify where your best opportunities are in the marketplace. Again, hello everyone, Tara Franzanello. I am the Program Development Manager here at IMIX Group, so program, supporting our program and contracts teams. Jimmy? Thanks, Tara. I'm Jimmy Baker. I'm a marketing strategist for the Public Sector Channel. I look forward to talking later in the presentation to talk to you about how you make an unforgettable first impression in the public sector. Great, thanks, Jimmy. Before Ryan kicks us off today, I want to provide you with a brief introduction, if I could, as to who IMIX Group is, what we do, and how we can be that easy button for you when selling into the public sector. IMIX Group has been a leader in our marketplace since 1997, exclusively focused on selling to the public sector. We hold 30 plus public sector contract vehicles across both Fed and SLED. We were acquired in 2015 by Aero Electronics, and now we're the public sector arm of Aero. This acquisition has allowed us to expand our reach out to the marketplace, uh, leveraging Aero's supplier and partner networks and platforms, and has helped us to expand our portfolio of offerings. Next slide, please. This is our growth acceleration framework. Tell us how we can support you here at MX Group and ways we can help our clients and partners grow their public sector business from strategic market intelligence and smart lead generation through targeted call campaigns to co-marketing, government contract vehicles, channel development and financing options with our Aero Capital Solutions Group. We can support your public sector business across, across both Fed and SLED. Next slide, please. Now I'm gonna kick it over to Ryan Nelson to talk about our IMIX Group Market Intelligence. Ryan? Thanks, Daryl. Mm -hmm. So everyone that sells in the public sector knows that selling into the public sector is challenging in part just because of the amount of information that's out there. Yes, there's a lot of money, but being able to identify where there's a very specific opportunity that you can solve, what the needs of that organization are and who to contact is what we do. Um, we want to help you figure out either whether it's a new market you want to get into, whether you want to grow in your current market. How do we break down everything that's happening in public sector, whether you're in a state government or a federal agency, and how do you drill down into where your core competencies are? Where can you really excel? What can you what can you capture in terms of that new investment money? And then we also work with our lead generation team and the other teams with inside of IMIX Group to help get those the right people on the phone and into that meeting for you. Next slide, please. So we can offer a lot of different material based on what, where your needs are. You know, we can do a high level, just kind of account profile of here's what a state or an agency is looking at, big picture. Uh, we can do a very detailed total addressable market if that's something that you're interested in to really, really look at where is everything available to you and come up with a strategy. Um, or you know, kind of our main offering is what we call sales pipeline analysis, where we will work, we'll meet with you learn about what your priorities are, what your focuses are, identify a specific opportunity area, whether that's a state or a federal agency, and dive deep into what the budget looks like, what those strategy looks like, what are those priorities that are driving their procurement processes, and make our recommendations of where to target within that organization, as well as set you up with the contacts to do that business development. Jim, if you could jump to the next slide. On top of that, we can we can mostly answer whatever question you need to be successful. I like to say that the better you can identify the insight you need, the better we are at finding the answer. So whether it's looking at cost pools, do you sell hardware, software, embedded IT, what, what do you offer and how do we make sure that you're going after a program with the funding that supports your competencies. Um, we can do agency timeline. You know, if you want to plan over the course of a year, we can identify when they're procuring what tools to allow you to set up your annual strategy. Um, we also tie 
really well to the sled market. <clears throat> we have a specific competency in sled. We look at where our federal dollars are moving into the sled business and how we can help organizations that already have a lot of expertise in the federal markets market continue to grow into that sled space. So as important as knowing where to go is, once you find those opportunities, you have to have a contract strategy to be able to capture it. And Tara is going to walk us through that. Thanks, Ryan. I want to talk briefly about contract strategy when it comes to selling into the public sector today. Uh, we know that the government is a unique customer, and that means selling into public sector comes from comes with very specific requirements. Imix Group helps helps partners navigate the ever-evolving government IT landscape, address complex challenges, and architect those best-of-breed solutions for our government customer to help them meet mission. We provide you with both federal contract vehicles, including GSA schedule contracts, SOUP 5 contracts, ITES contract, BPAs, OTAs. And when it comes to SLED, we also have a wide range of contracts, including state term and cooperatives. Offering compliance programs, access to marketplaces, and financing options through our, our capital solutions program are just a few ways we can help you support and sell into your federal and SLED customers. Next slide, please. So let's talk uh, about SLED for just a moment. Um, has anyone has ever sold into SLED? They know that each state has its own unique uh, contract and procurement laws. And with a wide range of contract vehicles, solutions, and state-specific market intelligence, Mix Group equips you with the right tools to serve your SLED prospects and customers. Next slide, please. Our SLED customers can purchase in a variety of ways, whether it's through a cooperative purchasing program, statewide, term, master, or standalone state contracts. Mixed Group SLED team contract experts and our market intelligence analysts can help you navigate this ever-changing technology landscape. We understand the nuances of more than $100 billion state and local technology market and have created a SLED support center that's designed to provide you with the critical resources necessary to accelerate your sales into the SLED market. Next slide, please. Government contracting requires some key activities in order to maintain compliance, whether it's managing price lists, negotiating terms and conditions, adhering to audit requirements. These take up time and critical resources for your company. We've streamlined that contract boarding process to relieve the administrative burden for you and let you get back to selling into your government customers. Next slide, please. Mix Group offers a wide range of compliance programs. Those include access to our internal legal counsel, the expertise to help you mitigate your risk, guidance on laws and regulations that are constantly changing in this marketplace. And this translates into policy and that translates into revenue growth for you. So we can help you through our com compliance programs to sort out the pieces and let you get back to what you do best, which is selling to your government customers. Next slide, please. Thank you. I'm going to now turn this over to Jimmy Baker to talk about building a public sector strategy. Jimmy. Thank you, Tara. Before we get started, I want to just take a moment. When you get into the government or education marketplace, there are a ton of acronyms, and I want to make sure that we're defining them all for you. I actually went to acronym school when I started this business, but you're hearing us use words like SLED, FED. You'll hear SLG. Let me tell you real quick when we refer to the public sector. We're talking about all of the federal government. We're talking about state, local, and county governments and cities. We're also talking about public universities and large K through 12 organizations. You'll hear it commonly referred to as SLED, which stands for state, local, and education, or FED. And then a lot of times, FED will get broken down into DOD and civilian. So just some nomenclature as we guide through this, or you hear us say some acronyms for, for you to know. What is vital when you do this business is to understand your customer. I can't highlight that enough. Ryan's team helps our, our, our partners understanding how the political directives impact legislation would ultimately impact the technology vision of a certain department or agency. It's very important that you know that. The other thing is it's 
is to understand the budget cycle. Most SLED organizations run on a July 1 to June 30 year, where federal is October 1 to September 30th. And you have to understand that they go through a process where they submit um, request to get approved to be able to spend for technologies purchases. There's a little acronym in there in that middle bullet, and it's called CIPIC. It had, and I'm going to tell you what that means in a minute. It has a bunch of different names, but it stands for Capital Planning and Investment Control. All that means is that when the government goes to buy, it's a team sport. There are a bunch of people in the room that make that decision. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you understand what's going on with their strategy, mission and goals. You understand where the money's at. That's things Ryan's can help with. But you have to have, for any deal, you need to have a contracts, teaming, and end-user strategy when you go after something. And that's where Tara can help you. What I want to transition to next is feedback that I have either interviewed or gone to sessions where I've heard government talk about what can marketing and sales do better. I want you to read this screen, and I actually have another screen behind this that will go over some comments from government. One of the greatest problems in communication is the illusion that it has been accomplished. Let's talk a little bit about this, and I'm going to share with you a quick story for a season of my life. I worked for government for almost four years. One day, um, we had a cloud supplier come in to us, and I was sitting in a meeting with my CIO and, I, and several other technical person. About halfway through the engineer's presentation, our CIO asked, would you like to know what our challenges are here? I kid you not. The engineer looked over respectfully and said, well, let me get through my presentation first, and then we can talk. Now, as you can imagine, that didn't go over real well with the room of people he was trying to convince for this cloud solution. These comments that I have put up here on the screen for you, and I'm going to flip back one slide. I would screenshot these, but this is really important that when you approach them to always come from a standpoint of knowing their business, how you help them. And I think this um, quote here is, uh, uh, it's the second one. Recently, I had a vendor pitch me for 50 minutes and didn't ask what my organization needs are. Don't be afraid to talk with government rather than at them. I want to talk to you next about communicating your value proposition. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the screen, and I could actually do a whole session on each of these bullet points, but I'm not highlight one or two things that are really important. There is a famous theory called the 73855 principle. It's by Dr. Albert Morabian. What that says is when you're doing presentations to people, they, res they respond to 7% of your spoken word, 38% to your voice and tone, and the remaining 55% is your body language. So when we're choosing our words, it is vitally important. When we get into digital marketing, the latest research is showing us that we have about five seconds. So as you're communicating your unique selling proposition and value proposition to the government, it's very important that you choose your words carefully, that you prepare, and that people do respond to the 73855 principle. The other thing I want to highlight, if you look over uh, to the far right of your screen, uh, second bullet in, is to be mindful right now. Depending on which study you read, we have four to six different generations in the workforce, and they all respond to information differently. Let's go to the next slide. One of the big things when you are pulling together your go-to-market strategies and content Working through our distributorship, you have the ability to work out with work with Ryan's team that will give you a base of information of where the numbers are, what are some of the key mission and mandates they're dealing with. I put on the left hand side of here some marketing activities that uh, that are very useful to use in this market. This is based on a study that looked at where government is going and what I would ask you to look at, take a look at your messaging. I want to share another quick story with you that's really important. Um, many years ago, I did an assignment for a defense parts contractor, and they wanted me to confirm that what they thought their company was is how the customer saw it. So a lot of times in companies, 
we'll say, you know, we're number one or we're the best at this, but we don't take time to validate that opinion with our customers. So I went on a journey where I, I not only interviewed their C staff, I interviewed people from the warehouse to sales and marketing. And there was similarity in their messages, but when I got to their partners and their customers, they saw them very differently. And as a result, the smart company rechanged its messaging platform to people. So again, don't assume the government sees you the way that you see them. We talked about that quote earlier that, you know, one of the biggest problems with, with communication is the illusion that you've communicated. Make sure you know thy customer. Our last slide here is I want to talk about a strategy. So our goal today was to give you an overview of the public sector technology market. There is a huge amount of money in this, both at the federal and state levels in education. Just to recap, my colleague Ryan talked to you about how we can help you and NetTrio with your marketing intelligence that's vital to this. Tara went over how she can help you with contract strategies and being able to get to your government customer. What I've put together here, whether you use um, a software to do this or good old Microsoft Excel or whatever spreadsheet you like, you want to take when you research a market, let's just say you pick one government organization, you want to take time to read their strategy plans, look at their budgets and forecast. What I like to do is always list out the mission and goals. And the reason for that, I have found myself many times in my life where I get an objection from someone and I'm able to parallel it back to their mission that either the governor or the president has set for them, and I can share how we help that. It's very useful to always know how what you're doing helps an organization with their mission and goals. Sometimes it's better citizen service. Sometimes it's better service to the students. Do a quick description of the deal. Put in your overall funding as well as how much money actually goes to your company, what goes in for services versus product. Always look at your timing. Um, I am of the big belief that you need about six months to really procure something to chase a deal to a year. You want to make sure you always know what their preferred contracting vehicle. There will be a COTAR, Contractors Officers Technical Representative, that you can ask, or Tara can probably tell you. Always make sure you go to what their preferred vehicle is. You have to look at, do you need a team? Are you a prime or sub? Next column, your past performance. If you don't have past performance, I want you to remember this, that inside of the public sector market, it repeats many of the verticals that are in the commercial world, logistics, supply chain, healthcare. Have a story, if you don't have a government reference, of how you help someone in a, in a business that you can parallel to a vertical in government. So let's wrap up. You get down to this and you're ready to go start knocking at doors. I've listed six things here on the far right column. I'll let you read them. But again, it all starts with research. You have a resource here with our distributorship for market intelligence. You always want to get a call plan on people that are involved in the capital planning and investment control process. This name will change differently depending on the organizations. It's known as Information Review Board, but I will tell you, Government buying is a group decision. I have been in these rooms when I worked for government. You want to make sure you get everyone involved who has a say in the decision to go forward with your product or not. Always know the vehicle, confirm your team, and then really start thinking about your marketing, not only to the end user before and after the proposal, but as well as your team. Are we all, you know, an engineer's message to the people that he talks to are very different than say what might be a C-level person's. I'm gonna take a pause. I wanna take a moment to, again, thank you all for listening to uh, myself and my colleagues, Tara and Ryan. I hope you have a great rest of the day at the NetTrio user group get together. My contact information is on the screen and we'd be happy to talk with you outside of the conference. I'm Jimmy Baker with Aero Electronics. Make it a great day.